Sometimes we have a number in front of our x squared term, and that makes the factoring a little bit difficult, or more difficult, than just looking at the factors of 10 that add up to 27. There's going to be a little bit more involved here with this type of example. Um, there's two methods that I kind of like to look at uh, to work on these. Uh, I'm going to take you guys through guess and check in this video. And I'm not going to go through all these. I'm maybe just going to pick, you know, maybe, I don't know, three, two or three of them. Um, so let's start off with this first one here. We've got 5x squared plus 27x plus 10. Uh, and if you remember before, uh, when we were talking about these, these are kind of like FOIL problems, but backwards, okay? So we know that to get an x squared, we need an x here and an x here. And notice now that I'm leaving a little bit of space because we're also going to need some numbers out front of the x to get a 5x squared. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space here. Okay, so that 5 out here means there's got to be some numbers in front of this x to multiply to give me 5x squared. Now we've also got this 10 here that's going to uh, affect, you know, what the, what the numbers in the yellow spots are going to be. So if I start off here, I'm, I can see that since these are both plus, my signs should be plus and plus, okay? Um, and now we're going to have to look at factors of the blue number that we could fill in uh, for this right here. So if I, if I look at factors of 5, I really only have one option. I've got 5 times 1, so I'm just going to fill that in right away. So I've got 5 and 1. And now for the other option here, I'm going to have to fill in factors of 10 into the yellow spots. And I'm just going to, again, pick some factors of 10. I've got 10 and 1. It's always good to write these down first. 2 and 5. And I think that's it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by go ahead and just filling in the 10 and the 1 first. So I'm just going to fill in a 10 here, fill in a 1 here, and let, let's just see what happens. Now, what I'm going to have to check, again, I can't just check that 10 plus 1 gives me 11 now because I've got numbers in front here. So you can either FOIL the whole thing out or if we want to check that middle term of 27x in the middle, what we have to check is what the inside and the outside terms will give us. So if we take this, we'll get 10x here and I'll get 5x here. And since they're both positive, if I were to add these 10x plus 5x, I wouldn't get 27x, I'd get 15x. So we're going to have to go back to the drawing board here. So let me erase this, see if I can do this without getting rid of my highlighter mark. Oh, I got rid of my highlighter mark. Um, so let's try something else. So if I put the 10 and the 1 here, I could also put the 1 here and the 10 here. I, I can actually keep the same numbers but flip-flop it. So let's try this again. Let's see if this works. So I've got 50x here and a 1x here. So 50x plus 1x gives me 51x. Unfortunately, again, that will not give me that middle term of 27x. So I, check, I call this the smiley face. You've got to check the smiley face uh, to make sure that it adds to give you the middle term. So let's try one more thing. So let's switch this up again. So 1 and 10, we just exhausted all our options there. That isn't going to work. Let's try 2 and 5. So, and actually, if we kind of think ahead on this one, uh, let's see. If I put a 5 here, a 5 times 5 will give me a 25. That gets me pretty close to 27. And then if I fill that 2 in here, that should get me 27 now. So 5 times 5 is going to give me uh, 25x. And then 2 times 1 gives me 2x. So 2x and uh, 25x gives me 27x for the middle, so that should check out. You may want to check the whole thing by foiling the entire problem out just to be sure, um, but that should be our answer here for this one. And again, if you foil that whole problem out, you should find that that will give you 5x squared plus 27x plus 10. Okay? Uh, I'm going to pick another one here at random. Let's pick this one. This one's going to be a little trickier because we've got a few more options, okay? So we'll pick number five here. So again, like before, I'm going to highlight this number here. Oh, let's stick with my same color scheme. So let's make this one blue, and we'll make this one yellow, okay? And what I'm going to need to look at, again, when I'm filling in my numbers here, is factors of 10. So I've got 10 times 1 and 2 times 5. And over here, I'm going to need factors of 12. So there's actually quite a few of these. So this could be a little tricky. I've got 12 times 1. I've got uh, 6 times 2. And I've got 4 times 3. And I think that's going to be it for these. Now let's fill in the parentheses. We've got two parentheses. To get an x squared, I need an x and an x. Notice I'm leaving a little bit of space here 
because I'm going to need some number in front of the x to get an x squared. So these numbers, 10 and 1 and 2 and 5, are going to have to go in those blue blanks. And in for the yellow blanks, we'll have to go those green numbers or those factors of 12. Now, I also know that since this is a minus in the middle, they need to add to give me a negative, but multiply to give me a positive, so they should both be minuses. A negative times a negative will give us a positive 12. And if I add them, negative plus a negative should give me, you know, that negative 23 in the middle. So the sign should be minus minus. And now I've got to go ahead and fill some things in. So, I don't know, let's try, I'm just going to start with maybe 2 and 5 on this one. So we'll go 2 and 5. And for factors of 12, let's just go with, I don't know, um, 4 and 3. I'm actually doing this wrong on purpose. I kind of found the answer there. Um, so 2 times negative 3 would be negative 6x. So this part of the smiley face will give me a negative 6x. This one will give me a negative 20x. Hey, we're pretty darn close there. We've got a negative 26x for our factors there. But that's not, not going to work. We need a 23, so let's erase and try again. Okay, let's try switching the 4 and the 3. So let's put, put these back in here. Uh, let's put the 4 here. I'm sorry, the 4 here and the 3 here, and let's see what happens. So 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, and 8x, I'm sorry. This would be negative 15x, and if we check, negative 15 and 8, yeah, that is going to work. That's going to give us um, that negative 23 in the middle. So again, I can see here that this is going to be my answer to the problem. Okay. Now, one thing to be careful of, again, if you see a number in front of the x squared, I'll look at number 6 here real quick. If I see a number in front of the x squared, and I didn't do this in the other examples because it wasn't there, but uh, always look for a GCF first. So number six might look like one of these more difficult problems, but if you can, you can pull a GCF of two out of here. So if we divide each of these things by two, to pull that two out, we would get x squared plus seven x plus 10. And actually this is not one of the more difficult factoring problems now. I could go ahead and you know, factor this with two parentheses, and all I need is factors of 10 that add to 7 because there's no number in front of the x squared. So this would be x plus 5 and x plus 2 would be factors of 10 that would work there. So um, you still need to look for a GCF on these examples. Um, if you see one, take it out. Like number 3, you would have to take a GCF out of here. And then if you can factor the inside more, do it, okay? So that's a quick uh, look at guess and check method for these types of problems. There's another method with grouping that I'll talk about, and I think I'm going to make one more video that kind of combines the thinking of both of these to make your guess and check super, super fast. So stay tuned. If you like this guess and check method, I'm going to make a later video um, where it's going to be like an advanced guess and check. Once you have the basics down, it'll make your guessing really, really fast.